there's like a couple ways that, you know, you've been talking about on your podcasts and, you know, you, you kind of see sprinkled across social media and different posts about how general manage, managers can kind of free up space. And I think that's one of the areas where, you know, there's some confusion and maybe lack of understanding within fan base about what kind of tools are at Brandon Bean's disposal. So I want to kind of throw a couple different contract types at you. And I want to start with John Brown because I feel like he's kind of that, you know, cut candidate number one because yeah. of all the uh, money that you can add back. What are the possibilities there? Is it a situation where the money is so good getting back almost $8 million that just cutting him and moving on makes sense? Or is there some restructurability to a guy like him or even a Jerry Hughes who has one year left on his deal? Right. Very different situations, in my opinion, because I think Hughes has a lot, a lot of value. And I think John Brown's role is somewhat reduced right now. There, there's a lot of things against John Brown's situation. I think his cap hit is too high. I think his overall salary is too high. And and it's an it's a phenomenal draft slash free agent class of wide receivers. One of the best we've seen. So everything's against him right now in terms of his current positioning. It, it, it's pretty clear to me that Brandon Bean is not a restructure fan. You know, he's he's going to do that when he has to, but but he's not the kind of guy that he's not going to be, you know, Howie Roseman in, in Philadelphia or Mickey Loomis in New Orleans that uses that as a part of their cap management. Um, he's going to have to this year. I don't think John Brown is the right is the right candidate for that. You don't want to be pushing dead cap or more cap or more guarantees into 2022 when there's a lot of unknowns with their wide receiver core going forward next year. Um, Jerry Hughes, different story. If he thinks Jerry Hughes can give him, you know, number two rusher potential, you restructure and extend Jerry Hughes for just like you did a year and a half ago. And you give him a little signing bonus and, and you keep going from there or a front, a front loaded roster bonus. I thought the way he's handled a few of the aging players is spot on. You, you know, you don't want to get in a situation where four or five of your major meat, meat players are, are plus 30 and you're restructuring 20 million down the road, which is what we've seen already for the past two weeks across the league. Um, you've got to be able to manage not only your cap, but your cash flow. And you don't want to be paying, you know, players to go away. Something we're starting to see more and more of for teams who just don't care. Brandon Bean cares. And he's got a plan with every single one of his players. It's very, very obvious I, to me. And I've seen this now in the other sports, especially with baseball, but a lot in the NBA, which is, you know, hands out dollars. A lot of players are going to be caught under the fact that we're just going to outright release you because we know we can get you back cheaper. We know we can start over with this whole contract and it's going to be cheaper. Even if he's at 9 million, we think we can get you at five and a half or six because there's not going to be a market for you for 9 million anywhere else right now. So you're just going to see some guys get outright released because of the current cap situation. So what about a pay cut? I know the release you could re-sign, but what about a pay cut for a John Brown where he could earn maybe some of that money back in, in terms of incentives? Uh, because you just said it, this free agent class is loaded, yeah. but the Bills aren't in a position to go out and, and try to get any of those guys that are going to be making $10, $12 million. Maybe they're not quite sure if Gabriel Davis can take on that full load as the number two receiver. So having John Brown for one more year at around $5 million, for instance, is better than outright releasing him. So is a pay cut something that could also be on the table? I actually don't. I, I, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the link of the optics of it uh, from from team to agent, from team to player. I think once you start doing that, once that starts getting public that you're asking players to take pay cuts, it becomes a thing. It becomes a stamp on your resume. Um, I think it's much, much easier. And you're doing the right thing to, for the player to just let him walk. Just say, hey, we can't make this current contract work. We'd love to have you back. We're going to give you the opportunity to go out and find a payday somewhere else, maybe a better situation for you somewhere else. I just think his production is replaceable. And it's you're not going to have to break the bank. You're going to be able to find cap space to bring in somebody to replace John Brown's production, with whether that's a fourth round pick or, or something like that. But um, I, I never have liked the optics of a pay cut. Now I understand it if you're 35, <laughs> you know, and you're just trying to hang on, and, and we can we can build some bonuses in for you can make it back. Um, but I, and I've never liked the optics of a of a good contract being asked to be cut when you could just start over. And I think that's where we're going with a lot of these players.